Hello there. Hello, hello. This is your buddy Snorlax from Team Soviet Gaming. Um, I'm just going to do a little um, uh, StarCraft for Dummies. I'm a Protoss player, so I'm going to be teaching some Protoss. I've got the game paused right now. I'm playing against a computer on very easy mode so that I can show you uh, just basically... Um, how to play as a Protoss and how to play StarCraft in general. So this is really a video for those who have never played StarCraft before, or never really played an RTS and want to learn. So I'm just going to take you through the basics really quick. Down here, these blue patches are your minerals. You start with 50 minerals so you can make one worker at your main base. For Protoss, your main base is called the Nexus. Um, the Nexus can produce uh, all your workers and later on a mothership. Um, we're not going to talk about the mothership right now because that's a very advanced unit. Um, down here are your probes, which are your workers. Every race, there are three races in uh, StarCraft, Terran, Protoss, and Zerg. Protoss is sort of the brainy alien race, um, sort of high technology race. Uh, Terran are the humans, Zerg are like the buggy, uh, sort of um, biological, biologically evolved race. So your probes are your workers, you send them to your mineral patch and then they automatically come back with... Um, the minerals. So I'm, as soon as I press on pause here, I'm going to hit uh, on my keyboard Control F1, which selects all six of your probes. As you can see over here, you start with six probes. Every race starts with the exact same amount of workers, six. Um, so that automatically Control F1 automatically selects all your idle workers, and since they're just at the beginning of the game, they are idle until they start working or moving. Um, and so you want to send all six of your probes right away to your mineral line. So I'm about to unpause and we're going to get this started. Alright, so unpause, select the probes, try to split them so that they don't all go to the same mineral patch. They, um, and then you start mining and you start making your first probe right away. Now I'm going to pause. Um, because this is a beginner's video, you want to make that first probe uh, basically at the same time as you're moving out your um, first six workers. You want that first probe making right away. And you see here I've got 60 minerals already, so i got to start another probe right away. Uh, StarCraft II is very, um, I mean, it's a strategy game, and economy plays a huge part in it. You really need to get your economy going. If you have no economy, you're not going to win. Everything costs minerals and everything costs gas. Gas comes from these uh, smoky green stacks um, over here called Vespine Geysers. And uh, for Protoss, um, the building that you place on there is called an assimilator and then you put probes in it and the probes will go back and forth delivering your gas and you'll see your gas count go up here. Um, this over here is your supply so you see I'm at seven supply because I made I have that one worker about to pop out and I've got my original six um, out of ten. Ten means I, uh, I've got the ten supply from my nexus uh, I think that a Nexus gives you 8 supply, um, and in the beginning they just give you 2 free supply. Um, so as soon as I hit 9 supply, I'm going to want to make a pylon. Um, oh, by the way, all the buildings that you make for Protoss, and for actually for every race, um, the buildings that you create are made from your workers. So you have to take a worker off the mineral line, which I'll show you in a second and uh, make the building. So here we go. I'm going to unpause and start my probe production again right away. Now what you, if you saw what I did just there, I tried to click my the probe I just made a bunch of times on that one mineral patch because I want 
these two probes to be mining efficiently from this mineral patch. Um, that is the most efficient way to mine uh, and mine faster. You want to mine from the close mineral patches if you can. Um, try to get two probes mining from each mineral patch uh, efficiently and what that means is as soon as this probe gets his mineral delivered to the nexus it'll go back and by the time it reaches the mineral patch this probe here that's mining will be done mining and go to the nexus so that the probe uh, that's just reaching the mineral patch um, can start mining and then by the time it's finished mining the second probe will reach the mineral patch and be able to get, begin mining again so I hope that makes sense um, it's a little advanced um, I'm gonna try to stick to basics though uh, very very basic so we're gonna unpause again as you can see I'm making two probes at a time that's so that when the first one finishes I can make another one right away I'm sending this probe out now towards my ramp to make a pylon because I don't I set the computer player as random um, so I don't know what race he is so I need to play safe I'm gonna pause again and talk a little bit about um, oh, I can't pause again that's unfortunate uh, well I place this pylon here so that I can make a wall off if I need to um, this is a two-player spawn map, so there's only one other position my enemy can be in. I'm going to use a chrono boost that speeds up any sort of uh, production that's happening. Um, so it makes your workers come come out faster. It makes uh, upgrades and such come out faster too, and we'll talk more about those later. Um, so now you see me placing down a nexus and sending my worker back right away. So my opponent I've just discovered is Protoss. Um, it's a, it's on very easy mode, so I'm not too worried about that, about whatever he's doing. Um, so I'm going to throw up a Vespine Geyser right now at 13 supply. Uh, as you notice, I'm using hotkeys at the bottom here. Um, I always keep my Nexus at 3, but I hotkey uh, through 0 just to start, um, just kind of a personal preference. Um, uh, my units always stay at 1 and 2, and I have my third unit control group as 8, which is also hotkey Q. So I'm using uh, Q as a third unit control group. Right now I place down my Psy core to get some higher tech up. You see I can't use can't build any of these units right now. I can only build a zealot, so I'm gonna go ahead and build a zealot so I can complete this wall off with that unit there, the zealot to block anything. Um, I'm gonna save up some chrono boosts so that I can get a warp gate research out faster, which makes which turns this gateway into a warp gate, and warp gates are uh, much better than just gateway units just producing out of a gateway. I'm going to make a second supply or a second uh, geyser. As soon as the um, cybernetics core started you want to get that warp gate research started and you can see I chrono boosted. I'm also making a stalker. It's a second tier unit, um, ranged unit. The zealot is a melee unit so it fights close combat. The, the stalker can fight um, long range. It has a range of six, I believe. Five or six. And I'm going to go ahead and do a standard four gate play. So I'm adding three more gateways now, and I've got four gateways. Um, I'm going to make a sentry. Sentries are good for many things. They can uh, make a force field right here if you place it perfectly, and then nothing can get up your ramp for as long as the force field is there for a certain amount of time. Um, oh, I'm supply blocked, and as you can hear, the uh, the game is telling me that I'm supply blocked, so I go ahead and make another pylon. Um, my sentry is out, I'm going to add it to my control group 1, and I'm going to make my sentry on the control group 2 so that I can use it uh, more efficiently. Um, I'm going to keep chrono boosting that warp gate. 
Um, so you can see I have not stopped my worker production. I, I'm going to try to keep it going and going. All right, so my warp gate research is complete, and I hit the letter G to make all my warp gates or my gateways into warp gates, and I'm going to make a round of stalkers, three stalkers, and as soon as my other pylon finishes, one more sentry. Alright. And as you can see, I'm, I'm switching between my hotkeys a lot. If um, I'm not just selecting like this with the mouse, I'm using my hotkeys to switch between buildings. Uh, much faster way of doing things. I'm going to throw down a robotics bay. Um, the robotics bay can produce a warp prism, which is sort of like a drop ship. I don't think that means too much explanation. You can load up units in the drop ship, and uh, uh, well, it's not called a warp drop ship. I'm sorry, it's called a warp prism. Um, it can drop off units in your opponent's base. You can use it to uh, be more mobile around the map. Um, I'm getting closer to being supply blocked here, so I'm going to throw down another pylon. I'm going to move my units out into the front so that I can begin to take an expansion over here. An expansion is just placing a new nexus, or if you're Terran uh, or Zerg, Terran is the command center, Zerg is the um, hatchery, both equivalent to the Nexus, although they do do different things. Uh, so, and I'm also going to use send this stalker out to this watchtower. Um, the watchtower will grant me more vision of the map so that I can see any sort of attack coming at me. And I see a red unit on my mini-map. It's a Zealot, and it is running away. So I don't need to worry about that. I built an observer. I hotkey my observer is zero, and zero is my middle mouse button. Um, so very easy to access instead of hitting the letter zero, which is f farther away from the first three keys. First, you know, four through five keys, which are really the important ones for me. I'm going to go ahead and make an immortal. That's a heavy unit um, that uh, it does added damage to. Um, two other heavy units, so armored units. Uh, I can show you the description on that. Here, I'll show you the description on it. So, see, you see the attack method targets air and ground, weapon speed 1.44 per second. That's damage per second. Uh, it does damage 10 uh, versus armored. It does a little, it does 14. So, that's your. Um, that's your stalker. Um, you can look at the other there's plasma shields. Those don't really come into play till later. You've got Protoss plus one armor. Uh, you've always got one armor on a unit like the stalker. Um, same with the immortal. And you see here it targets ground uh, versus armor. It does 50 damage. And versus regular units, uh, light units like the zealot, it only does 20. Um, so see, you see the Zealot is a ground unit, it does melee attacks, it has a faster uh, weapon speed than the Stalker, so if it gets close to the unit, I can just show you by attacking one of my own units. So see, it, it hits like that, but then you can move the Stalker away, like this, and shoot back at it. But the da the zealot can only do damage if um it's really close to the unit um you see i hear i'm floating a lot of minerals and gas that's just because i'm showing you how to play and not really worrying about it you don't ever want especially er in the very early game which this is it's starting to get into the middle game you see here it's uh we're almost at we're at 12 minutes um I'm throwing down uh, more than one pylon at a time now because my production is a lot higher than it was. Uh, I'm going to throw up a Stargate as well, which produce, produces flying units so that I can show you some flying units. Um, also notice I am continually making probes and chrono boosting them out so that they get out faster. I'm going to make a forage, two forages actually, 
to show you what that's all about and also get my twilight console out to show you what that's about so I made a warp prism to show you how that works um, the warp prism can pick up units some units are larger than others so you see the immortal takes up uh, two whole slots and stalkers take up uh, one slot each so if I were to take out the immortal I could put in two more stalkers um, and I'm going to show you how it works by uh, sending it over to my enemy's base. Um, you see I've got it rallied. I hit shift click. Shift click is how you set waypoints. Um, and you see I've got my nexuses waypointed to the mineral line so that the probes will go right there. Um, your forge is where you make your upgrades, so you improve your weapons and your armor, which I just did. Armor level 1 and uh, ground armor 1. So I'm going to chrono boost those to get them out faster. This is the Twilight Council. allows you for a higher level uh, to go into higher levels of tech. Later on in the game, you've got to get another, thing, another uh, building out before you get the really high tech out. So this is charge. It... Um, allows, so you can read right there, allows Zealot to intercept nearby armies, also increases the movement speed of the Zealot. So I'm going to start that. And that's another research, take some time, you always want to chrono boost your researches, and of course your uh, probes as well. You get more energy on your nexus over time, and the energy is what allows you to use chrono boost. Um, I'm going to take a third base a little late. You usually uh, want to take um, a third base around uh, 15 minutes. So here, at a small attack coming from my uh, opponent, I didn't need to force field that, but if there had been more units, that would have blocked the passage of the units off a little more. Um, You can only warp in units, as you see, with the warp gate near, uh, in the radius of a pylon. So you see all these circles. Anywhere where there's a circle of pylon radius is where I can warp in units. But I cannot warp in units, for example, over here where there's no, where I haven't built a pylon yet, but I'm going to. Um, now I'm going to show you how the warp prism works. So I'm going to fly it in here, avoid that cannon, which is a defensive uh, unit. So I can drop off these stalkers, and then hit E to turn it into a warp, turn the warp prism into something else that I can use, like a pylon. Um, now the computer is saying good game, I'm going to say no, because uh, I'm of course just showing you how, how the game works. Um, uh, the game ends when your opponent either surrenders or uh, you kill all of his buildings. My third base is up, so I'm going to go ahead and start sending probes there. I completed my researches, so I'm going to start the next level of research. You can see there how they affect my units here. Um, I've got two arm plus two armor now on there because it's an armored unit. Uh, so I've got plus one armor and plus one weapons. It increases my uh, durability and um, also increases my uh, attack power. Um, I'm not really worried about these units up here because uh, again I'm, I'm just using a uh, I'm just fighting a computer and I, I'm just trying to show you how this game works. Um, so now let me show you uh, a couple of the air units. I'm going to make a phoenix first. A phoenix can only, uh, it's an air superiority fighter, so it does very well against other air units. Um, but not all air units. There are counters to the Phoenix, counter units to the Phoenix, but that's more advanced play, and really I'm just trying to show you basics here. Um, you don't ever want to get supply blocked like I am right now, 126 out of 126. Um, so you always want to keep making pylons. Probably not, you want to try to not make more than two at a time. Uh, or, well, I should say more, don't make more than three at a time, really. Um, because as soon as you're done with two, you should be able, you should, as soon as you're done with two, as soon as they've warped in and actually turned into um, pylons, you want to make 
two more right away because you want to be constantly producing units whether it be drones army uh not drones i'm um, sorry that's the zerg worker whether whether it be probes or um or, or army you always want to be producing units all right so this is the phoenix it's a very fast unit it has this gravitation beam which can pick up a unit i'm going to show you by picking up one of my own units see so it enables that it disables that unit from firing and at the same time you can use another unit to kill it or another phoenix now i'm going to make a void ray to show you what that's all about and i'm going to start up my level 3 production or my level 3 upgrades which are um, important upgrades are incredibly important now I haven't made any other production buildings um, usually by now I would want to make you know a lot more so I'm gonna go ahead and make a lot more production buildings just a ton of gateways you you at this point in the game I mean I, I'm not showing you um, builds or strategies here really I'm just of course teaching you the basics so uh, three probes is the optimal amount of probes to be ha to have in your um, Vespine geysers you don't want more than three you don't want less than three um, unless of course you know you're doing some advanced stuff uh, like you know you there's ways you can confuse your opponent depending on what he scouts but um or if he even scouts, so it really depends on the level of play you're at. Uh, so here's the Void Ray. It gets stronger uh, with a charge up. So it can target air or ground, but let me show you how that works. So I'm going to attack my Nexus. So it starts off doing a little bit of damage, and then slowly you can see that the it's it's getting larger, its beam is getting larger, and now it's fully charged, so now it's doing its maximum amount of damage. And I'm going to stop doing that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, I, I upgraded Blink, and I'm going to show you what Blink is all about. It's just a way to make your Stalkers a lot more mobile, so... I'm going to go ahead and Blink right on top of that Stalker. See? Nice little Blink. It's a fun, uh, fun little move. You can Blink Stalkers back if they're under attack. You want to Blink the unit the uh, units that are injured back first. I, of course, I wasn't getting attacked by anything, so I was just doing that to show you. Um, go ahead and make some more Vespine geysers. Um, there's a few more units I want to show you. And then uh, this uh, little... Pro, our uh, StarCraft for Dummy session will be over. So for sentries, they have uh, three different um, skills they can use. Uh, you can see that the hotkey there for the force field is F, and the hotkey for guardian shield is G. Uh, guardian shield looks like this, and it increases the armor of all your units by one. So it's a very useful, useful... Um, skill and very important one to be using during battle um, so yeah like I said there's a couple more units I want to show you see I can't make uh, dark Templars or high Templars yet because I haven't made the tech buildings that allow me to make them so that is the Templar archives which allows me to make high Templars and this is a dark shrine which allows me to make the dark Templar I can't make either the Templar Archives or the Dark Shrine without first having made this Twilight Council over here. Um, so when people talk about tech paths, that's kind of what they mean. Uh, it's, uh, it's exactly what they mean. Um, um, and you can't make the Twilight Council or the Robotics Facility or a Stargate without having your Cybernetics Core. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, research Hallucinate. And at, also at your cybernetics core is where you can get the upgrades for your air units. So now my, high, uh, my Templar archives is done. I'm going to research the Templar ability. So Templars, I'm going to make a bunch of them. Oh, but I'm out of pylons again. 
And pylons are really good to make uh, all over the map. Um, of course, you don't want to lose supply on your pylons, or you don't want to lose your pylons or too many of them if you see yourself losing them. Uh, if you are, have built them on the map, if you see yourself losing them, you need to make more right away because you don't want to get supply blocked. Um, being supply blocked, of course, means you can't make any more units. Okay, so I'm going to show you what the High Templar can do. First, it can feedback units. So I'm going to show you by feedbacking my own Phoenix. The Phoenix has energy, 200 energy out of 200, as you can see at the bottom here. Um, that energy, of course, is for the gravitation beam, which I'll show you again looks like that. And then you can attack the unit that's in the gravitation beam, just like that. Um, and it can't do anything about it. Alright, so I'm going to feed back my Phoenix. Oh, I guess I can't feed back my own units. That That's too poor. But okay, so what feedback does is um, if you feed back an, ener an enemy unit that has energy, like a Phoenix does, or like a Sentry does, or even like a High Templar does, if you feed back it, it um, does damage based upon how much energy that unit has. So let's read the description uh, drains all energy from the target deals one damage per point of energy so this Phoenix is at 200 out of or it's at it's almost at 200 energy again so if I were to feedback it it would do 200 damage to the Phoenix so essentially it would just kill the Phoenix it would instantly kill it um, as you can see I've been transferring probes to my new uh, bases that's just to keep the mining going, keep the production going, and you always want to keep making bases. Um, like I said, economy is in a very, very important part of the game. So now I have Sty Storm researched. Sty Storm, let's read this. It's got a cooldown of uh, two seconds. It takes 75 energy to cast, whereas um, feedback takes 50 energy. Or no. Yeah, yeah, it takes 50 energy. So, creates a storm of psionic energy that lasts 4 seconds, causing up to 80 damage to all units within target area. So, let's see what that looks like. See, so, I've, I I click Psy Storm. Really, you want to try to use the hotkeys, though, which are labeled at the top here. So, T for Psy Storm. And then, it gives you this little, uh, sort of, uh, box circle that um, shows you where the Psy Storm will land. So I'm going to do it right on top of my of my units. And if you don't move any of your units, see, oh, all my sentries died. Did a lot of damage. And you can cast multiple Psy Storms at once, which uh, I'll show you over here, or I'll kill my probes. It kind of looks like this. And I, I did that so fast by using the hotkeys. Now, um, another thing you can do with Templar is make them into Archons. Oh, looks like he still has some units left. I'm going to go chase those down, have a little fun. I'm going to blink forward so I can try to catch them. All right, so Archons are good because they do a lot of splash damage to um, biological units. Biological units are, um, well, basically... Um, anything that isn't like sort of robotic and as you can see I, I chased this uh, I chased that army or all of that small force I'm not gonna call it an army all the way back using blank um, so yeah Archons do a lot of splash damage and um, they uh, rely heavily on their uh, shield up or the shield upgrades and their shields. So the shield upgrade is very important for archons um, because, as you can see, they only have 10 out 10 hit points. So as soon as those shields are gone, your archon is basically dead. Um, and you can, you know, improve the shields, of course, at the forge, which I'm doing. I'm getting the plus three shields. I'm going to show you what a Dark Archon looks like, or a Dark, uh, sorry, Dark Archons don't exist in this game. Um, dark Templar. So, these are invisible units. Uh, they do a lot of, they're kind of like the Zealot in that they aren't ranged units, like Stalkers. 
um, so they have to do melee damage, but they do a lot of damage very quickly, especially with the upgrades that I have. So, see them doing that there, and uh, I'm going to send them over to my enemy's base over here to show you how they kind of work um, in a battle. Also, you can make, I'll make some more, I'll make some more uh, Dark Ar or, uh, dark Tempo, I'm sorry, I keep calling them Dark Archons. Um, you can turn them into Archons as well. You need two uh, either Dark Templar or High Templar to make an Archon. Um, you can't make an Archon using both a uh, using both using a um, High Templar plus a Dark Archon. You have to use uh, one or the other. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this Dark Archon works. And I think my enemy here has a sentry. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, or not a sentry, sorry. A uh, observer. Observers can spot invisible units like Dark Templar. So can cannons. They detect things. He says detector. So if I get close to that cannon, my Dark Archons will be uh, revealed. But if I'm not close to the cannon, I can just do what I please with them. See, they do a lot of damage really fast. But now, see, if I get close to the cannon, they get attacked. Um, and then, of course, you can make Archons out of them. Um, so I've got two more units to show you. In, or, well, really three more units to show you in the Protoss arsenal. Um, again, this is a very basic uh, video. So I'm not really showing you strategies or, um, you know really telling you what to do. I'm just showing you the game, showing you what it looks like, and showing you uh, the different units and explaining how they work. So I'm making this fleet beacon so that I can make a carrier and a mothership. And I'll tell you what they do when I got them. And I'm going to also build a robotic support bay, which allows me to get upgrades for robotic units, um, speed, increased speed for my observers, and increased warp prism speed to make my warp prism faster. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't want to kill, quite kill the computer yet. Um, so, yeah. Fleet beacon is complete, so I'm going to make a carrier. The carrier does the most damage per second in the game, but it's not that doesn't mean it's the best unit in the game. I'm also going to make the mothership to show you what that does. Uh, it says here, the description is, the ultimate Protoss vessel can use Vortex and Mass Recall, cloaks nearby units and structures, but it does not cloak itself. Um, and it gets taken down very easily when targeted. Um, so I'll show you what Mass Recall looks like, and I'll show you what... Uh, what the Vortex look like, looks like and what it does. I'm also going to make a Colossus, which is a siege unit. Um, Battle Strider, it's, it's described here. Battle Strider with a powerful area attack. That means it does splash damage, so it does damage to units, so not just the unit it's attacking specifically, but units uh, around that unit as well. Um, so it has an air, sort of like how Psy Storm has an air, it can affect damage on multiple units at a time. Uh, so we'll show you, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, over here you can get at your fleet beacon, you can upgrade the range for your phoenixes. I'm not going to do that, but it increases phoenix range by weapon by two, so that just means um, the range of attack of the phoenix is increased, um, making them much better. Um, so the carrier starts with no ability to attack. See, I can't... Oh, uh, uh, no, I do start with... I guess I start with four interceptors. But you can make more. So it starts with four interceptors, and then you, uh, of course, can make more. I'm going to make it stop attacking my Archon. 
um, and then you make more interceptors. The interceptors are what do the damage, um, and what makes the carrier good. Um, so here's the mothership, and as you can see, it is cloaking my buildings within a certain area. It can also cloak my units. Here's my colossal. It does the splash damage we were talking about. I'll show you by killing my archons with it. I wasn't doing splash damage right there. Hmm. Having trouble making it do splash damage to my archons. I think it's because they're massive units here. Let's try some zealots. Zealots are uh, not massive. Um, I'll talk about what massive means in a different, a, a different, um, I guess seminar. I guess you could call this a seminar. Okay, so here are some zealots, right? Light units, small. Let's see what the Colossus does to them. Oh, you know what? I can't do the splash damage because um, these are friendly units. Um, but essentially, if these were enemy units, uh, the Colossus would melt these pretty fast. Um, it was doing damage to just that one, but the you see these beams coming out of the Colossus? It does damage to anything that those beams hit. Um, so first I'm going to show you what Mass Recall looks like. Mass Recall works just like this. It's pretty simple. It's hotkey R. Teleports all units owned by the player in the targeted area to the mothership. So this is the targeted area, this big hexagonal looking thing here. And I'm going to bring all these stalkers home right now. Shoom. Nyaum. You like my sound effects? I hope you liked them. So that's a good um, way to use the mothership defensively. It really is just a defensive unit. Um, of course, you can use it offensively too. Like I could. Uh, I haven't seen many players do this, but I could sneak, try to sneak my mothership all the way over here to the side of my enemy's base, and then mass recall into his base. Um, but more commonly seen is the use of Vortex, uh, which as soon as I have the energy to use it, I will show you what that looks like. Um, over here, let's talk about some of the upgrades. This increases your Colossus range. This one increases your uh, Warp Prism speed, and this one increases your Observer speed. Over here, we've got, uh, of course, I talked about the Phoenix speed before, and this is to increase... Um, uh, the speed of interceptors so it says how how quickly they launch from the carrier it makes them do much more damage per second essentially um, so as soon as I okay I have vortex energy so I'm gonna show you what that looks like um, so essentially what you would want to do is if a bunch of units say were coming up here and you weren't quite ready for them and need to warp in a round of units to deal with them, you can use this vortex to suck them in. So I'm going to show you what that looks like on my army. See, all those units in the nearby area just got sucked into that black hole, and now they are rendered useless for a period of time, um, and they'll pop out again in just a second. And there they all are. It doesn't do any damage to them, but if you were to vortex your an, an enemy army, especially a zerg, and then put your units in, especially units with splash damage like the Archon or the Colossal, uh, and then put them in the vortex as well with the with your enemy, then as soon as they pop out, the splash damage done by the Archons will just be so intense that it'll melt everything that pops out. Um, um, and it can also, of course, be used defensively, like I said, uh, to stall an enemy or cut the army in half. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much, uh, that's all the units. Um, I don't think I missed any. I talked about, yeah, I talked about them all. Um, oh, uh, last thing... 
uh, will be the century. I never mentioned hallucination. So let's read the description. Hallucination. The, con the control for that is C. It creates a hallucination that cannot use active abilities, cannot deal damage, and die more easily. Hallucinations last 60 seconds. Enemy detectors reveal hallucinations. So let's make a hallucination. The most common hallucination made is the Phoenix because it is a fast unit and uh, hallucinations are generally used to scout out the area. And we'll, I'll show you how fast it dies by sending it at that cannon. Um, and also you can see there's a little bar that's decreasing there. You can see it here too. That's because um, it's on a time limit of how long it can survive and poof, poof. It just poofs out of existence. It doesn't add to your supply. It's just a hallucination. doesn't do damage. Um, generally it's just used for scouting, but you can use it for other things like you could make a uh, colossal, right? And then you can confuse your enemy to um, thinking you have more colossi than you actually do, or to make him think um, um, well, that, well, that would deter attack. Or to make him target down the hallucinated colossi instead of the actual colossi that's doing the damage. Um, so, yeah, that's this, that's pretty much StarCraft II uh, Protoss basics for you. Um, just all the units and what they do. You can only produce one mothership at a time, whereas other units you can have multiple you know, units, as you can see, but you can only have one of the mothership, um, just because it's so strong, and, uh, just for fun, I'm going to vortex my units again, and I'm going to send these over to end the game. So I used B, the hotkey, to blink over and kill that cannon. And I'm going to focus fire. Focus fire just means having all, click A, click, um, the target, and it'll target down whatever you just clicked. And so, victory! And that is the end of, uh, Protoss 101. Very, very, very basic. Um, uh, I do not recommend using anything I did as a strategy of any sort. I was just showing you the units, showing you how they worked, and what their abilities were. Um, so I wasn't doing any real strategy or uh, anything like that. Um, so I hope this helps some people out there that are just uh, very new to StarCraft and want to learn. Uh, thank you for listening. This is Snorlax from Soviet Gaming. Check out SovietGaming.com. Peace.